Come on, come on, lift. Can we just rest on our feet this morning? Can we begin to give God some praise on this day? Can I get about three people that are willing to rejoice on this morning? For this is the day that the Lord hath made, and we ought to rejoice. Can I get somebody to rejoice and just be glad in the fact that we are in the house of the Lord on this morning? Hallelujah, Lord. We are yet thankful today. Another day that you have blessed us with. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Let us pray together. Most gracious and eternal God, our heavenly Father, once again, dear God, you've taken us safely through another week. God, you've allowed us to be here this day. You chose us today that we might come together and worship you. Heavenly Father, we invite you in this service to do as you will. Touch whom you will, God. Have your way, moved by your power and by your spirit. God, we thank you in advance. Do it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said amen, amen. and amen. Come on, let's just give God some praise. For we've come to have a good time in worship on the day. Join in with the ensemble as they lead us in song. Amen. amen. Come on, let's keep the praise going this morning. Come on, come on, stand up on your feet and put your hands together for Jesus this morning. How many of y'all just glad to be in the house of the Lord one more time? Come on, if you're glad, would you stand to your feet and let's give God some praise in the house this morning. Because he's worthy, he's worthy. He deserves all of our praise. He deserves all of our glory. He's the Lord of all. He's the ruler of the earth this morning.
it like this. If you believe that he's the Lord of all this morning, come on, let's give God some praise in the house this morning. Listen. Come on, let's give God some praise in this place. Do we have any worshipers in the house? Do we have someone that has, the Lord has brought you out of a situation? The Lord has brought you through an obstacle? The Lord has brought you through some challenges? We came to worship. Can we go there again? Oh, 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 oh. touched you with a finger of love, gave you another opportunity today. Hallelujah, Lord, I thank you. I came to worship him this morning. Amen. God bless you. God bless you, ensemble. At this time, we're going to move forward with some announcements, and then we're going to continue in our worship. Is that all right? Amen. Amen. Of course, indeed, today is the first Sunday of the month. We're already into the third month of the year. Uh, I just remember having watch night service and already we are in the month of March. And you all know, of course, on the first Sunday of the month, we do like to recognize those who are celebrating birthdays during this month. So if you are here today and you are celebrating a birthday in the month of March, my Lord, she about jumped off the balcony. Huh, y'all, can we just bless God for all of these March babies? Hallelujah, God, we thank you. Amen, indeed, you are looking good. And we bless God for each and every one of you. Happy birthday to you. And we pray that God will continue to look in, looking as good as you are today. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday to each and every one of you, I can't wait to June now, because if y'all have seen the way she popped up, I said, Lord, I'm, uh, I hope our insurance paid up, because she looked like she was going to come over the. <laughs> yes, hallelujah, praise the Lord. As well, on the first Sunday, we do want to recognize those couples who are celebrating a wedding anniversary during the month of March. Would you please stand at this time that we might recognize, celebrate your love on you. Indeed, we thank God for you and his keeping power that we just pray that he will continue to bless you and keep you loving on each other just as you did on the 
first day that you met them. Amen? Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Happy anniversary. I do want to make a special mention of an anniversary that was made, brought to my attention this week. I believe it's uh, Doris and Robert Lamb. I'm not sure. Uh, if they, are they in the service right now? Now, now, I, now, when I got this message, now I, 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 didn't, I didn't know if it was quite accurate. So if I mess it up, please correct me. They say that they have been married for 70 years. Can we just put our hands together and give God some praise? Hallelujah. Bless God for you. My goodness gracious, 70 years. I, I didn't expect them to be here today because I thought they would still be on their honeymoon. But it is so good to see you in the house. Hallelujah. 70 years. You give us something to shoot for. Amen. Amen. Praise God for you. Thank you, Lord. 70 years. That's a long time right there. Ah. Woo. That's when you don't show enough connected. Anybody? <laughs> when I, I mean that's real connected when y'all might not even want to hear this, but you know, he, he passed gas. She say, excuse me. That's how, that's how you know when you connected. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. You, you can't do nothing without the other. Lord God, I thank you. 70 years. Woo. I can think of a whole lot of stuff I don't even want to do for 70 minutes. But for 70 years, God has yet kept him. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I love it, I love it, I love it. Praise the Lord. Amen. Let us, let us, let us move on because I can stay there for a while because we ought to just really celebrate that. 70 years, 70 years. Hmm. All right, all right. Let's go on, of course, as well. We know we are now in the Lenten season, and so I do want to keep that before you. Of course, you know, during this Lenten season, 40 days, uh, we are fasting and praying. Every day, we have a devotion that is sent out by way of email, posted on our Facebook, that we all might, as one body, come together and of course have that devotion and prayer every single day, Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. We are fasting until the dinner hour. Those of you who can, indeed, we just bless God for you. But every day, not just Monday, Wednesday, Friday, are we praying, amen? We're praying every single day, hallelujah. But Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we are yet fasting until the dinner hour. As well, of course, we are we do have a Lent debt payoff campaign uh, during this season of Lent, and we are just praying and, and thanking God for it all. Indeed, we are looking to pay off uh, the smaller loan, the parking lot loan. There's about $100,000 left on that loan. And I am a firm believer that God will take care of us, that he will do it. As we grab hold to the vision pastor's vision that we might pay it off during our Lenten season that we'll do it. Let me just share this with you, a testimony. Last week, if you were here, I made the announcement. I said that if we could get about 200 people to give $600, it was a slip. I meant to say $6. But do you not know before, when the service was over, I was greeting folk and a young lady came past and said, Pastor, you may have slipped it when you said 600, but she had a phone and she opened it to push pay and said, there's my 600 right there. I tell you, God is moving and I'm just, I'm just crazy enough to believe anything that he says to me. And he's saying that not only are we gonna take care of that loan, but we are gonna have an overflow, amen? Amen, so y'all just continue to give. We need about 200 people to give $6 a day. That's 200 and four. I see your hand. I see your hand. Look, see, don't be ducking. <laughs> yeah, I need about 200 people to give $240, about 260 to give $5 a day. That's 40 days for $200, and we will exceed that goal. Amen? 
Amen. So let's do that and watch how God blesses us here at First Baptist Church South Hill. As well, as well, um, we will be having a Good Friday service here on April the 7th. Shiloh Baptist will be our guest on that evening. And then, of course, lastly, on Resurrection Sunday, we will culminate the Lenten season and celebrate right here at 1030 a.m. in our morning worship. Amen? Amen. Amen. So please keep all of that in mind. We look forward to seeing you tuned in even as well on our Wednesday evening Bible studies will be uh, devoted to the Lenten season. So we're just excited about what God is doing during what God is doing during this time. Amen. Amen. Let's let's go ahead and just look at what we have for the week. I uh, just want to make all of our women aware that on Wednesday morning at 815, of course, we will have uh, Winners Wednesday with Kenneth with Minister Keisha McDaniel. Again, our evening Lent Bible study will be via Zoom at 7 p.m. And then on Saturday, on Saturday, the Women's Ministry Connect Her session will be right here from 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So please make a note of that, ladies. Uh, look forward to seeing you here. As well, just want to make you mindful that we are still looking for volunteers. Thank you to all of those that are responding. Indeed, we are seeing you coming forth. I'm seeing emails come forth with those who are interested in looking to volunteer and support. But of course, we need volunteers in the security, greeters ministry, media ministry, kitchen, food services, as well as our ushers. So, so if you are interested, please, please make that known that we might put you to work. Amen. 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 Future events, future events. We will be having our first quarter church conference on next Monday the 13th. Go ahead, put that on your calendars. Next Monday evening at 7 p.m. on the 13th, we will have our first quarter church conference. It will be via Zoom. You can register on the church website at as late as Tuesday. We will have that up by Tuesday of this week to register. You must register to attend. The link will be sent out to join the Zoom on Monday. So please go to our website starting on Tuesday to register for the church conference. On March the 17th at 7 p.m. Here, 7 p.m. here right at the church, Couples Ministry will be launching their new video series, uh, Vertical Marriage. And I won't talk much about it. I'll go ahead and have Chris, if you wouldn't mind playing that uh, trailer that uh, they might see what we have in store for them. Amen? <laughs> and we're also really raw is because we talk about our struggles and the pain we've been through. You're trying to find your happiness from your spouse and you don't find it there. These are men and I'm looking for my husband. We'll cut that. We will bring that back. But indeed, vertical marriage is going to be an awesome, awesome time for the couples. We look forward to you being here on the 17th. If you want your marriage to continue and last for what? 70 years? Then on the 17th, you want to be here and understand that if your marriage is going to grow first, you got to grow up. Uh, vertically, you got to be connected with God, the Father, and allow him to draw that marriage closer together. It's going to be a beautiful session. It's not just for the, the young couples. It's for the young, the old, the middle-aged. Everybody has an opportunity to learn and to grow in the couple session. So we look forward to seeing you on the 17th. Now on the 18th of March, there will be a Save Our Sons event from 1 p.m. to 3.30, the self-care master class and movie. Ladies, come enjoy yourself uh, and have a self-care session. And then for the young ones, the young boys, there will be a movie. It is free. It is free. But please note, you must register. So you are able to register today in the fellowship hall, fellowship hall A, immediately following the morning, the morning service. Or 
as well. You can register on the church website. But please, please, please register to attend ladies, a self-care session and movie for your sons. And now on Wednesday, March the 22nd, we will also have an on-site blood drive. Those who are able, we look forward to you signing up. Indeed, we are about being a blessing to others. Amen? Amen. So if you're able, if you're able, please sign up uh, on, for Wednesday, March the 22nd. We will have an on-site blood drive here at the church from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. You can go to redcrossblood.org. Uh, to register, enter the sponsor code of FBCSH, and that will have you connected to us. Amen? Amen. At this time, I believe that concludes all of my announcements. I do have an announcement for VSU Day. I'm going to ask if Sister Annette Brockett would please come, that she might make that announcement on this morning. Amen. Come on. Can we just give her a hand now as she comes? Coming for VSU Day. Good morning, First Baptist. Good morning. This is a beautiful Sunday day that the Lord has made. Amen. And I honor the spirit of Christ, recognizing Reverend Tolliver in his absence, Reverend Davis, our officers, this beautiful choir, and the musicians. My name is Annette Bronkett, and I invite your attention to this announcement. On the fourth Sunday here, March 26, the Virginia State University Gospel Chorale will be returning. You know, they were canceled because of the pandemic in 2020. But they are coming back on the fourth Sunday, March the 26th, here at First Baptist. The tickets are $25, and you can purchase them on Eventbrite. There'll be no physical tickets, but all the tickets will be purchased on Eventbrite. We hope that you will come out, support the Tidewater Alumni Chapter of Virginia State University, who is sponsoring them along with First Baptist who always feeds them, and we are very grateful for that support. So again, on the third Sunday, fourth Sunday, sorry, fourth Sunday, March 26, here at First Baptist Church, South Hill, tickets are $25, purchase them on Eventbrite. Thank you very much. Amen. 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 Come on, let's just bless God for Sister Brockett and VSU. We are looking so forward to having the VSU Gospel Chorale here on site. They indeed have blessed us in the past, and we look for nothing less on the 26th. Amen? Amen. We're excited about it. At this time, it is offering time. Come on, can we just put our hands together? Can we get excited? Can we just celebrate for now? We have an opportunity to give back to God a small portion of what he has given to us. He just keeps on blessing us. And amen. So he loves a cheerful giver. Let's get ready to prepare to give in our offerings. If you have your tablets, if you have your cell phones, or if you've dropped it in the envelope or made your way to one of the ushers, we're indeed grateful. Please also note, write and push pay as well you are able to select the Lent option for the Lent de debt payoff option. And so we look forward to you doing that as well. So join me now in prayer. Most gracious and eternal God, our Father God, we are just so thankful today that you've blessed us, God. You've blessed us immensely. God, you bless us every single day. And right now, God, we thank you for this wonderful opportunity of being able to give that, God, to share with you some of what you have blessed us with. God, we're entrusting it to First Baptist Church South Hill, God, that they might use it, God, for the uplifting of your kingdom. God, may they be a blessing here in the community. God, all that is given, we ask that you to bless both the giver and the gift. 
have it to be used for the uplifting of your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody say amen. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. At this time, join in with the ensemble as they lead us in song.
Somebody say, it is well. Is it well with your soul on today? The song says, whatever my life, whatever I'm going through, whatever situation I find myself, I know with God it is well. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Ah, uh, it is well. It is well. Hallelujah. Thank you, choir. Uh, see, when we can begin to say it is well, no matter what the situation is, the enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And if he can see you with your head down, if he can see you frustrated, that does nothing but make him happy. But when you stand there and say it is well, it is well because I know where I am rooted and I am rooted in Jesus. And no matter what you throw my way, it is well. Hallelujah. My God, Lord, I thank you this morning. I feel good right now. Yes, y'all better, better cut that out. Y'all better cut that out. Hallelujah. It is well. Amen. It is well. Hallelujah. My Lord. Mm. Yes. See, somebody has been through some things this year already. Just in the first three months of the year. People are going through. People are hurting. Ah, we're seeing deaths on this side, deaths on that side. Just this morning alone, I've gotten two, two text messages from two different people about two different deaths that we have to be concerned about. And, and see, and, and, and the enemy would have us to be all towed down. Yeah, we ought to grieve. We ought to, to love those who have passed. But sometimes we just got to step back and say, God, it is well. Lord, have mercy. Whatever your decision is for my life, it is well with my soul. Hallelujah. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I dare you to thank him today. I dare you to lift holy hands and say, Lord, I thank you for whatever situation I'm in right now because I understand that there is a purpose, there is a reason, and as long as I can hold on to your hand, my God, it is well. Ah. Hallelujah. My Lord. Mm. Hallelujah. Somebody say it's preaching time. Ah. But ain't no preaching gonna happen before you finish praising. You go ahead on and pray. I'm not gonna cut you off. He said, don't you cut it off. Who am I to cut off your praise? I ain't been through what you've been through. I don't know what your week has been. If you gonna praise him, praise him. If you can't praise him in the house of the Lord, if you can't come worship in the house of the Lord, ah! Yeah, 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 yeah. See, somebody came in to worship this morning. Somebody came in here to get something from God on this morning. Somebody said, all the hell that I have been through this week, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, if I can just hear the word of God on this. 
Hallelujah. Thank you, God. You better go and get yours. There's a blessing in this place. There is a worship in this place. There is anointing in this place. And, and if you don't get yours on this morning, guess what? It's nobody's fault but your own. Yeah. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, sir. Uh, if you can't come to church and lay your burdens down, where can you lay them? If you can't come to church and get what you came here for, why are you coming? If you came to just sit and watch, if you just came to signify this is not the place, but this is a place where God moves, where God touches, where God delivers, where God heals, where God set free. And in this place today, we're going to give God some praise. Can I get about two people that will just raise your hand and say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, just give me another chance. Lord, just work in this situation. Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 The Spirit of the Lord is in this place. He is yet moving. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you for the move of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just want to first give an honor to God and just, just thank him for this wonderful opportunity to stand before you to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Give an honor to our pastor and our first lady in their absence. Of course, they've uh, 
ask that we please share with you the, the gratitude and the thankfulness for all of your prayers. Hallelujah indeed. Sister Tolliver is doing better. Come on, can we just put our hands together? Oh, you can do better than that because prayers are being answered. Hallelujah. Healing is still happening. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And we are, and we are just going to continue to pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't intend to be before you long. But I do intend to share what thus said the word of Lord. So if you have your Bibles, I ask that you would please turn with me to Luke. Luke 15. And we'll be reading verses 11 through 20. The word of God says, Jesus told them yet another story. Once a man had two sons. The younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. So the father divided his property between his two sons. Not long after that, the younger son packed up everything he owned and left for a foreign country where he wasted all his money in wild living. He had spent everything. When a bad famine spread through the whole land, soon he had nothing to eat. He then went to work for a man in that country and the man sent him out to take care of the pigs. The young man would have been glad to eat what the pigs were eating, but no one gave him a thing. Finally, somebody say finally. <laughs> he came to his senses and said, my father's workers have plenty to eat. And here I am starving to death. I will go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. I am no longer good enough to be called your son. Treat me like one of your workers. Verse 20 then says, and I'll read the first portion. It just says, and the younger son got up and started back to his father. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Heavenly Father, God, right now it is preaching time. God, today, I ask that you would show yourself mighty. God, I ask that you would make me small today. God, that only you will be seen. God, anoint my lips today that what I share will be only what you would say on today. God, today, bless your people. Do it for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Timing is everything. If I were to put a, put a title to this message, it would simply be, Timing is everything. Now, you all I know have uh, in a well-preached church, you've heard this message time and time again in many different ways. And so have I, but this time when I read the story, it hit me a little bit different. As I'm looking at the passage of scripture, depending upon where we are in our season or timing in life, this parable will hit us all somewhat differently simply because timing is everything. 
Surely, you and I have read this passage of Scripture many times. I've preached from this Scripture. I've heard this text preached by many, but never before have I looked at it in this manner that God showed it to me this time. God showed me throughout this text that everything in this parable happened for a reason and a purpose. And throughout this text, I assure you will find that timing is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, let me back up for a minute. Let me, can I just work with this timing thing for a minute here? Can I just stop and pin it right there for a minute? Uh, you know, well, well, see, you don't recognize, if you don't recognize and or believe in today's world that, that timing is important, then you're going to have a hard way to go. Mm, let, let, let me be more specific. Anybody, anybody in here ever had to bake a cake? <laughs> anybody in here like to bake? Okay, I ain't talking to you. Is there anybody in here who really don't like to bake? <laughs> and, and, and you done got you a cake box. <laughs> and you done opened the cake box and you done followed the instructions. And you done mixed it all up and put it in the pan and you put it in the oven and then got the cleaning. And before you knew it, you had put the box in the trash and your, and your child, if you're a good one, and already took it out. And then you decide you're going to go off memory. And you cooked that cake for about 45 minutes when you should have cooked it for 25 minutes. And you take that cake out and it's not your best work. Somebody say timing <laughs> is everything. Yeah, yeah, timing is, is everything. Maybe, maybe that didn't reach some of you guys. Let me, let me just talk to those who are a little learned, it, those who have ever had to drive a vehicle that you had to put gas in it, you know, that fuel, that petrol that we're moving from now. If you're driving a vehicle that has gas in it, odds are that you have something in it called a timing belt. Ah, that timing belt is the belt that sinks and controls the crankshaft and allow it to work in conjunction with the, um, I mean, let me get to my note. I don't want because I don't work on cars. I'm going to tell you, that ain't my profession. <laughs> the camshaft, that's what it is. It sinks with the camshaft and the crankshaft. And so when the spark plugs ignite, when the fuel is mixed just right, that's what causes the combustion so that the engine will turn. Amen. Did I get it right? Yeah, yeah but guess what? If that timing belt breaks, you're in a world of hurt. Ah, you're in a world of hurt. Somebody say, timing is everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know some of y'all, I, I don't know any, some say, I don't know nothing about no car. I ain't never worked on no car, never even looked up under, under the hood. That's what my wife would tell you. She'd say, all she need to do is put the key in it. Now she ain't got to put the key in it, just boop, boop. That's it. Don't have to put gas in it. Don't have to wash it. You know, just drive it, just drive it. So, so let me just go over here. So maybe some of y'all have been in a situation where you said, you know what? I've been wearing my pretty black hair so long that maybe I want to, uh, to go to a, a light brown. Oh, somebody say, yeah, 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 they done been here. You done put that light brown. You thought you was going light brown and you left it in there a little too long and ended up with a light blonde mess. Somebody say, timing is everything. Yeah, timing is is everything. See, one thing I've come to know and or timing is an absolute necessity in life. If you're going to be successful, if you're going to be productive, you have to have an awareness of time. You see, the Word of God tells us in Ecclesiastes there is a time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. And if you don't have a sense of time and timing, if you don't know the difference of when to plant and when to pluck up, you are not going to reap the harvest that you are looking before because timing is everything. 
Yeah, yeah. So often we want to, to just reap the benefits or, or have the reward, and we have not put in the effort or, or, or the tilling and the, the planting uh, and the watering, the learning and the growing that we might achieve and sustain the harvest. We just want it right now. Mm, can I go a little further? Uh, let me just bring it home. So when y'all to see that the, the lottery is way up there, the mega millions, and, yeah, and, and everybody's going out and, to get that ticket. Yeah, 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 that's, I'm going to get me a ticket because I got to hit this lottery. And, and then we find out that is because we want that reward without the work. We, we want to pluck up without planting. That's where we are. And then as soon as we see that someone done hit it and find out within a year and a half later, guess what? They are broke. They've lost every cent simply because they didn't put in the work. They were not prepared for the blessing. I come by to let you know today that God has blessings in store for you right now that will burst you wide open. Mm, blessings that you ain't even ready for. He's just holding him back. He's just waiting on you to get to a point in your life that you can receive it. So he's just giving you bits and pieces so that when you are ready, timing is everything. Mm. Yeah, yeah, timing is everything. You see, there's a thing called energy and effort that we must put in as we prepare for the blessings. If you're not ready for your blessing, if it's not your time and you've not put in the work and you don't know what to do to sustain it, it is not going to last. So that brings us to our text today. And as I said, I looked at it somewhat differently. I've preached this text and I've talked about how the young boy was grown and before his time, thought he could go out and do whatever he wanted to do. And he was such a bad kid. He did this and he did that. And you know that story. And then we've heard it how about the father who was still such a loving father, how he welcomed him home after all of that. But today, I'm, I'm presenting it somewhat different. I'm finding that this boy wasn't such a bad boy. Matter of fact, he might not even been a boy. The word didn't even say he was a boy. It just said he was a younger son. Ah, uh, that right there just piqued my interest when I saw that, when I really saw that, because that means it's some old boys that are making some mistakes. Uh, yeah, it don't, you don't have to be a preteen or a teenager to make a mistake. Here it is in our text. We find that the man, he had two sons, two sons that he had raised, two sons that he had taught and nurtured in the very same way, two sons that ate at the same table and lived under the same roof, and yet they were different. Mm, the older son was fine right where he was, under the father's roof, but the younger son wanted to experience something different. Uh, as I look at the text, verse 12 says, the younger son said to his father, give me my share of the property. Mm, see, that was the first indication to me where I came to realize in this text that God had a plan for this young man, and he was trying to show him that timing was everything. Can I point it out to you? First of all, it says, the son, he said, give me my share of the property. First of all, that tells me the son must have been of an age to where he can even approach his father in that manner. I don't know about you, but I grew up in a household that if I wanted anything, I don't care what it was, if it was a pack of annihilators, if I just wanted some juice out the refrigerator, I didn't say give me <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I, I had to say, may I please have, may I... So that tells me he had to be older a little bit the way he thought he could just say, give me. Huh? Ah. Then it says the son, then, then I see, saw where the son must have already known that at his age, he was due a portion of the property. Yeah, he, he already knew he, that he, he had a portion. And at this point, he was saying, give me my portion because he felt the timing 
was right. Ah, ah. Then it says, he, but what really convinced me, this is what lets me know that, that this is about timing here, was, was that the father didn't even ask questions. The father did not make a fuss. The words say that the father, what you want to do with it? What you going to do now? He didn't say where you're going. He didn't ask him any questions at all. Why? Because the timing was right. Ah, indeed, the, the timing was right. It was God's plan. This parable that God was, has given us to share with the people, have, it would have ended totally different had not the timing been right. As a matter of fact, if the timing was not right in this situation, we probably would not have ever heard about this parable. But God had a plan. Uh, that we could see and find ourselves here. Verse 13 says, not long after that, meaning he didn't act immediately. He again, he again waited until the timing was right to pack up everything. He, he didn't jump to it. He thought about it. He had a plan. He knew what it is he thought he wanted to do. Did not recognize that God already had a plan laid out for him. Mm, unbeknownst to him, he was following God's plan for his life. Perhaps he didn't realize what he was waiting on, but indeed there was a plan. God had a plan and a purpose for this son. There's a lesson that needed to be taught and a lesson that needed to be learned. God had a plan and a purpose for this parable that would be told over and over again until every day, Sunday after Sunday, till somebody recognized that timing is everything. See, my next encounter that reinforces the fact that timing is everything, when I look at the father and his action, no doubt the father, like any other parent, would want to run after their son. When you see your child leaving out of the door, you see him driving away in the car. Many of us have sent children off to college, or perhaps they've, they've wed, and you see them leaving the house, and there's a feeling, oh my good, that, that just overwhelms you. But this boy was just leaving and going to a far-off land that the father had no idea where he was going. But the father didn't stop him. Uh, see, the father was aware that there was a lesson to be learned. No, father, no doubt that the father wanted to send him off, send his workers there. You go keep them safe. You go bring them home. But the father allowed him to leave. He knew that timing was everything. He knew that the son needed to go out and experience some things. And the son had not been re made ready to come back home yet. See, the father knew that he had raised him well and he had taught him well, but yet and still there were some things that his son needed to experience. There were some things that the father could not himself teach the son. There were some things that he could not show his son. And the only thing that would bring that to pass was time and experience. Mm, I'm hoping I'm helping somebody this morning. Uh, I, I hope I'm helping somebody this morning. See, because you have a situation where, 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 where someone has left and walked away out of your life. And, and you are sitting here wondering, what have I done? What have I done to cause this departure? What have I done? I've raised them right. I've taught them all I could teach them. And see, but the thing of the matter is timing is everything. God has a plan. God has a lesson for each and every one of us. I don't care. You can't stop his lesson from being learned. You can't stop her lesson from being learned. When God has a plan, there is nothing that will stop his plan. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Father, the father, someone, somebody out here saying, you know, why is he not home yet? Why is she not home yet? You're praying and you want it to happen now because you're in this microwave society. Everything happens right now. I pray to God. Why has he not answered? Ah, uh, 
See, because timing is everything. Your timing is not God's timing. And God's timing is not your timing. So you want to go ahead and reap the harvest. See, we have an illustration here where the young man is walking away. And you want to pray today and they be home tomorrow. You want to pray tonight and they be home by the time you get off your knees. But God said there is a lesson, there is a plan, there is a purpose, and he's got to go through it for himself because timing is everything. Yeah, yeah. Then we got some of us in here that want to reap the harvest right away. We want to go down on our knees and before we can get up, the harvest is already there. But see, this is what we got to have faith in God. Can I just come over here, cameraman? I know I'm putting you to work today because you ain't used to all of this movement. But can you, if you can see right here, there are some roots here. Ah, see, we want to just begin to pray and, and plant a seed, and we want to expect that to, by next week we're going to have a harvest. But there is some work that needs to be done. There is some tilling that needs to be done. There is some watering that needs to be done. There's... Ah... Uh, but then, I, then some of us say, well, look, I've done that. I've watered the plants. I've watered the corn. I've watered the wheat. I've tilled it. I've fertilized it. And they wait two days, and they get upset with God because they don't see a change. But somebody say, timing is everything. Yeah, just because you don't see the growth yet doesn't mean that growth is not happening. Can, can I break that down for you? Can I break that down for you? Before you begin to see any grass, before you begin to see any grow, guess what? That seed that you plant is already growing. The thing about it is it's growing downwards before it ever grows up. There are some roots that you have planted. There are some things that you have shared. There are some stories and some lessons that you have given them, and it is going down on the inside. And you might not see it come to surface yet, but if you just continue to pray if you continue to trust in God in the right time <laughs> uh, God will bring it to pass for timing is everything timing is everything yeah yeah you're looking and you're saying Lord have mercy all I'm seeing is dirt I've been out here in the field and all I see is Dirt. I'm watering this dirt. I'm picking the weeds out of this dirt. I don't even see a, a leaf coming out of this ground yet. And you wondering what is going on. God, have you deserted me? God, have you left me? But he said, I'm right here just trusting me. I'm just rooting. I'm building the rooting structure. See, that's the problem with a lot of us. We don't have our roots firmly planted and grounded in the word of God to know that when he's planting us, he's preparing us for what is yet to come. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Verse 13 goes on to say, the son went on after he had went out to the, to the, to the far off land. It says he, on to, he went on to say, then he wasted all of his money in wild living. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I read that right there. And, and, and I said to me, as soon as that happened, that would have been my exit strategy right there. As soon as my pockets were empty, I didn't know where I was going to stay. I didn't know where I was going to eat. That was my exit strategy right there. But the boy stayed right there because the timing was not yet right. The son had experienced some things. He had to see some things. Money wasn't going to bring him total happiness. The son had to experience some acquaintances. Y'all know them acquaintances that when you got a pocket full of money, you got a whole, I'm, and I'm careful not to say friends, but when things are going well, you got a whole lot of them, they, don't you? Yeah, they are they're right there. But the minute, the minute you have a little Bail, a little drought, you find out who your friends really are. Amen? 
uh, he found out quick that he just had some acquaintance. God had this young man in the midst of a process, and the time had not come yet for it to end. Had the process stopped right there, this would not be the parable that it is today. The young man had some more things to go through, for his time of completion had not yet come. The timing is everything. Verse 14 says he spent everything, all of his money, no doubt had given away all he had. His jewelry had been taken, everything. God even allowed a famine to spread throughout the whole land. Uh, when I read that, I said, Lord, you are something. When you lay out a plan for my life, when you lay out a plan for someone's life, you think of everything. Not only did the boy's money run out. Ran out, meaning he wasn't going to be able to purchase food. But just in case he got lucky and stumbled on somebody nice enough that would give him some food, God impacted the whole land. He said, know what? I'm sending a famine. See, and that's what happens sometimes in our situations. You get to doing what you want to do, not realizing that what you are doing is impacting everybody around you. Not only are you in a drought, not only are you in a famine, but the whole land is in a famine because you won't do... The word says he soon had nothing to eat. And, and, and with that, you know me, I got to have something. How to say some tea. That would have been definitely been enough for me to go on back home right then and there. But he couldn't go because the timing was not right. He still had some things to go through. Verse 15, come with me if you can, says he went to, to work for a man in the country. But the only job that this man had was him tending the pigs. Oh, my God. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. I ain't never tended no pigs, but <laughs> I have been in areas where there were pigs, and uh, uh, it was not the most pleasant situation. <laughs> and the only job that this guy could get was to tend the pigs. Ah, but guess what? It's even worse than that. He was so hungry that the Word of God says that he was willing to eat what the pigs ate. Now, I don't know about you, but pigs are, and I hope I don't offend nobody, but pigs are disgusting. Pigs, oh my gosh, just to be around pigs, there is an odor, there is... Ah, I'd start to itch and I'd start to, it, it just ain't a good place to be. But this guy was tending to the pigs and, and he was even willing to eat what they ate. Y'all, anybody heard hog slop, pig slop? Ah, oh, I got some country folk in here, isn't that right? Yeah, y'all know what that, that ain't nothing but leftovers, corn, watermelon, rind, anything you can think of. They don't put it in the, in the trough, in the slough, and the pigs are just turned, nothing but mess, something that everybody done picked over, chewed, whatever. He said, ooh, I would love to. Just the thought of it. You, you, I, I don't know what kind of garnish they put around that to, to make that look good. I don't know what kind of... You know how they put the, cherry, the, the little cherry drizzle and all of They must have done so for to make him even think he would even eat some of it. Ah, uh, but he said, I would even eat that. But guess what? <laughs> when God has a plan, he said he was right there working with the pigs. He would have ate what they ate. But no one wouldn't even give it to him. They wouldn't even give him the slop. They wouldn't even give him the leftovers. When God says you're going to be hungry, you are going to be hungry. When God says I'm sending a famine, there's going to be a famine. When God has a lesson for you to learn, you're going to learn that lesson. You're going to stay right there until the timing is right. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Finally, somebody say finally, verse 17. Yeah, the timing 
was right. Ah, uh, the word says he came to his senses. I don't know if it really was he came to his senses or God then allowed him to reflect on some things. God said, you've been through some things. Now let me bring some things to your remembrance. Here you are in a situation where you have no money, no friends, no food. You have left a place where the people who used to serve you, the people who used to wash your clothes, the people who used to fed you, the workers at the house have more than you have. He came to his senses. He began to, to see the mistakes, the errors of his ways. And he said to, he said, Lord, I got to, I got to go home. I got to go home. The timing, the timing is right. The word says he came to his senses and my father's workers have plenty to eat and I am starving to death. He said, I'll go home to my father and say to him, I have sinned against God in heaven and against you. And at that moment, the timing was just right. Yeah, God said, my plan is coming to fruition. Not only is this young man now going to be blessed, but everyone that reads this story, that everyone hears this text will understand that if I got to get your attention, there is a process and a plan that I will put into place that nothing can change it but time. Hallelujah. Here it is. Here it is. The young man now, now helps us to see and understand the scriptures that were stated in Psalm 145, 15. It says, Lord, you have captured our attention and the eyes of all that look to you. God, you have given what we hunger for at just the right time. When you open your generous hand, it's full of blessings, satisfying the longings of every living Thing. Hallelujah. Can I just step away for me? Can I just share something with you? I, I, I didn't understand it. <clears throat> why God was giving me this message when I began to put pen to paper or shall I say fingertips to, to keyboard. Because <laughs> you know we type. <laughs> Typing. And, 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 and as I was looking at this word, I was looking to go a whole different direction. But God said, you know what? I need to reinforce something to you. I need to bring something to your attention because I don't need to go into details, but you all know the transition that we're going through. Many have, have come up to me and have asked me questions and, and why is this and why not that and what have you in regards to my what what I'm about to do and 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 I'm gonna be totally honest with you when I first heard of it you know how self does don't you what does self do uh -huh, self looks out for self <laughs> yes right away I begin to say ah it's my time it's my time and and then something said boy if you don't get on your knees and talk to me about it because I have a plan for your life. He said, I have you on assignment right now for a reason. Hallelujah. And your assignment is not yet finished. He said, he said, let me make it plain to you. He said, maybe you don't think about it as often as you should, but I have ordered your steps. You see, I came up in an era when, when it, it was told that you go to, go to college, you get a good job, and it, that's, that's pretty much how I laid out, right? Go to college, get a good job. He said, but, but do you recall that you went to college and you got out of college with a computer science degree? And everything that you applied to, every resume you sent, you were getting responses saying, too much education or not enough experience. Ah, oh. <laughs> see, I was, I was psyched up when I came out. Y'all ever, y'all heard of psych before, right? I, I was excited. I was psyched up when I got on. I'm going to get me a good job, going to make some money, going to do whatever. And guess what? Things didn't happen the way I thought God had a plan for me. 
He says, as I began to read this story, he said, you just like he was working in the pig pen, said, guess what my first job was out of college? Y'all ain't gonna believe this. First job out of college, I was, you know, just, had, just got me some new suits when I got out of college because I was ready to start working in the office. My first job, I was, <laughs> I was cleaning bathrooms with stuff on the walls. Some of y'all probably, I might have cleaned up behind y'all. Y'all ever heard of the, it used to be a sports bar on the Navy base. Uh, y'all heard of that? Norfolk Live or something, whatever it was down there. That was my first job. I was, I was a janitor. I was cleaning the bathrooms. And the thing about it, I was so unskilled in that area that I couldn't wax the floors. They gave me all the grunt work. I was on my knees with a Brillo pad, and I was on scrubbing down the tile. And, and you know how us men can be. We can't hit nothing. So you know I'm wiping off everything and all this kind of stuff. That was my first job. Go to, high, go to college, get a good job. I didn't understand it then. He said, but let me, let me unpack this thing for you. He said, then, then my next job. He said, I'm going to take you somewhere else now. Uh -huh. Lo and behold, he took me to Montgomery Ward's, the shoe department. <laughs> Don't even clap. <laughs> it won't no step up. Because, <laughs> you know, now, you know, after you work at Athlete's Foot and all those kind of places. You know, that's the kids love that. That's kind of hip. They get that black and white outfit and all this kind of. No. I won't sell no Jordans and no Nike ads. I was selling Buster Browns and, and, and. <laughs> but that's what God had for me to do. He said, I'm going, you're going to humble yourself somehow. If, if you ain't going to do it, I'm going to do it for you. He said, I'm going to help you. He said, but with that, whatever you have, and my father always said, whatever job you're doing, you're going to work. Work like it's, like it's the best job in America. You work like it's the best job you ever had. And lo and behold, the job was a, a, just a seasonal job, a seasonal job. Come time, come January, February, when it's time to let the extra folk go. Do you know somebody from another whole department in the electronics department came to the manager, came to me and said, look, I've been watching you. I've been watching you, and I know that this position is about to go away. But I have a lead associate position over here in the electronics department. And I know you probably haven't been over here or, or did much work in that. He's, he said, I know you got computers, but there's so many other products over here. But I want to bring you over here if you want to. I said, well, <laughs> does it... Am I going to have to clean the toilet? <laughs> I said, you got, sign me up. Sign me up. See, I didn't realize where I was stepping into. God had a plan for me. Watch this. So I was there at that time working in the electronics department. Then I had another job to come along. I started working at the post office. I was working two jobs because I was out of school now. And that girl over there, y'all see her? Wave your hand, baby. I, I, I knew I was going to have to provide for if I was going to marry her, right? So I was working two jobs. And, and, and I was working there. And then lo and behold, a company came to, to, to Chesapeake called Panasonic. Y'all ever heard of that Panasonic? Y'all, anybody ever heard of Panasonic product? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I interviewed for the job. Folk hired me on the spot said I was perfect for the position, but the position was not available. The company was just opening up, so they only had so many positions in that department, but it said, if you come in on the entry level, and this is going to tear you up right here, it said, if you come in on the entry level for this 750 an hour, at least you can get in here. Now, I was working two jobs, both jobs paying twice that much. But neither of those jobs I had before had any benefits. 
I said, if I'm going to take care of her, I'm probably going to have a family. If I'm going to have a family, I need to have some benefits, some health benefits. Anybody know about benefits? I needed some benefits. God said, you remember when we sat down, you and I, and we talked, and you asked me, God, what should I do? Knowing that I'm going to have to, you're going to step back. You're going to take a few steps back. And I said, just trust me, and you trusted me, and you left that job that was paying you more money, and you went to that job that was only going to pay you $7.50 an hour that was going to give you some benefits. And then, <laughs> see, that's why I said, Lord, have mercy. When I was reading this, here, with all that this young man was going through. See, I, and that was fine, because I said, you know what? I can do that, that day job. I can do that at Panasonic for seven fifty. dollars I still got my night job paying me double that. I'm good. I'm good. Three months later, I got a promotion at Panasonic to go into the department that was, I initially interviewed for. They were now able to grow. Bear in mind, it was only taking me up to nine fifty, Right? But that was going to take me into the night shift, where, or the evening shift, where my second job was. Now, I left the first job. Now, I was going to have to leave the second job for one job, paying half the money I was getting. God said, it's time. You got to trust me. I began to see all these things in this parable. That I was, Timing is everything. I left the second job, took the job for $9.50 an hour. Do you all know that in four months, four to six months, I can't remember exactly, I was then made the supervisor of that department. In less than a year, I was then the manager of that department. A couple years later, I was the group manager of that. And all because... See, if I hadn't taken that shoe job... <laughs> I would not have been seen by the manager of the electronics department that then not only expanded my uh, expertise from computers to, to TVs to VCRs to everything. I was over everything that plugged into a wall. But if had I not taken that shoe department job, I would not have been prepared for the next level. Lord, have mercy. But this right here going to mess you up. So I was there for 19 years at Panasonic. Oh, I was doing good. I was comfortable. Not a care in the world. God was blessing. Kids was growing up. Kids were taken care of. And God said, I'm going to shake things up again for you. <laughs> 19 years in. If you had told me a year before, I would have said, you must be out of your mind. But here the executive pastor position became available. And he says, how are you going to trust me? So you mean, this is what I said, this is how I have a conversation with him, because sometimes, you know, you can't be this and thou and everything. I got to be, Lord, Lord, you got to talk directly to me. So you trying to tell me, Lord, that I need to now pay, leave another higher paying job to go to a lesser paying job and deal with <laughs> more people <laughs> but, but 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 this was this was a beautiful thing i said god you're going to have to show me that this is you. You're going to have to show me that this is you because my family is doing well. I have a family to provide for. Are you telling me to leave this job to go and do this job? He said, try me. This is how God works. He then had me to go to my boss and share it with him what God had shared with me. He then said, if that's what God has you to do, I'm not going to hold you back. And not only that, this is what I'm going to do for you. He said, I'm going to let you go ahead and work there. I'm going to keep you on my books because I want you to stay all the way to the end of this quarter 
well, actually the fiscal year, which was in May for us then, I was able to leave and come here in February. He said, but I'm gonna keep you on my book so at the end of the year you can still get your bonus here, but you're gonna go and do what God called you to do. See, when God has a plan, I would behoove you not to put the, the uh, cart in front of the horse. See, that's where folk mess up. They begin to put the cart in front of the horse because you, you want it to happen for you. But God is saying, I need you to listen to me. And when you put things in order, when you begin to put the horse in front of the cart, things begin to happen the way it should happen. And I just want you to know that God is saying today that there are some things that are going on in your life and in your life that maybe you don't understand right now or that maybe you can't see your way out right now. Now, but God has a plan if you can just trust him and you can just hold on to him that he will begin to make that way plain he will begin to open up doors for you he will be in today that's the kind of God I serve and I'm trusting him and I'm believing in him that we're going to be alright whatever comes our way somebody say it is well for the timing is right that God's plan is right that God's plan is the best plan and no matter what comes our way he will he'll take care of us he's gonna see us through no matter what the enemy brings our way somebody say glory hallelujah Lord I trust you Lord I believe you I'm trusting you God for you laid the roots, uh, we're planted, uh, and we are grounded. Uh, and right now, God, uh, whatever it is, uh, it is well. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. For the timing, the timing is right. Timing is everything. Uh, we got to wait on them, church. Uh, don't move when you want to move. Move when God say move. Do what God say do for timing is everything. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet. Most gracious God, our Father, we thank you right now for this word. God, we thank you for the transparency. Uh, the ability to share. God, we thank you, God, for your many blessings. God, we thank you for the plans that you have for each and every one of us. God, thank you for allowing us to see that it's not our time, but it's on your time. God, help us to walk in the path that you've set before us. Help us to see you clearly in all that we do. God, I pray on today for those who are going through. God, I pray for those who have lost loved ones who are, are grieving right now. God, I pray for those who are in need of a healing, God. I pray for those who are in the hospital rooms, those who are laid up at home, God, those who are incapacitated in some way, God. Right now, God, we're praying that you would anoint them afresh. God, touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. God, even those that are in the sanctuary right now, those that are viewing via cyberspace, God, there are people who are hurting, God, and don't understand why. God, begin to reveal to them your plan. God, give them assurance that you are still in control. God, right now, move by your power. God, and after having done so, God, have it to be that we will recognize that only you could have done it. God, do it for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, 
we pray. Amen. Amen. And hallelujah. Come on, let's give God some praise. Maybe you're that one today that are in a situation where a lesson is being learned. Maybe you're the one today that have fallen out of the will of God or fallen off the path that he set before you. Perhaps you're the one that mama has been encouraging to make a move or father has been trying to get you to come back and get on course. Perhaps you've gone off and done whatever you've been big and bad enough to do. And even though they were trying, we recognize today that the timing just wasn't right. Maybe today is your time. If you are that one today, raise your hand right where you are. If you're willing to allow God to impact your life, to come into your life, to, to restore you anew, just raise your hand wherever you are. I see your hand, praise God. I see both of your hands, praise God. I see your hand, praise God. Come on, let's give God some praise. We ought to be cheering. We ought to be clapping. I see your hand. I see your hand in the balcony. I see your hand. For timing is everything at God's time. Hallelujah. Bow your heads with me, everybody. I don't want to see not one eye open. I don't need you to see you peeking, looking around. As a matter of fact, I want everybody to pray this prayer with me so you won't even recognize who really needed to pray this prayer. Heavenly Father, I call on you today for indeed you are the only one that can work in my situation. Father, I need you in my life. Right now, I recognize that you sent your son, Jesus. Hallelujah. I believe, God, that he came and walked this earth, showed us the way, that he died, but early on the third day morning that he rose again. Forgive me now. Take me into your bosom that I might live a life that is pleasing in your sight. Amen and amen. Come on, let's put our hands together. Let's give God some praise for those who have given their lives to Christ on today that have accepted him into their lives. If that is you out there in cyberspace, if you're viewing via Facebook or, or YouTube, go ahead and put a number one in the chat so that when we see that, we can reach out to you and pray for you and encourage you. But there's someone else today. Perhaps you've realized you don't even have a covering. You've come back. You realize you're backslid, but perhaps you recognize today you don't have a covering. You're looking for a place that you can connect with, where the Bible is being taught. I didn't just say that words were being spatted out. I said where the Bible is being taught. You're looking for a home, a church home, where like-minded individuals love God and love God's people. This is the place. If that's you today, after the service, come across the front. We'll have deacons here who can receive you. But we love you. We just want to love on you. We want to be with you and walk with you along this journey that God has put in place for you. Today, we want to trust that journey along with you. We don't want you to walk it alone. If that's you, come down today. If you happen to be watching via face, Facebook or YouTube, put, a, put the number two in the chat field that we might reach out to you, that we might work with you, accept you, and love on you here at First Baptist. For we know that God is able to do all things but fail. Amen? Amen. 
Amen. Come on, can we just